G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well, could things be looking positive at the moment? We have a confirmed breakout. Now, we need to see it close there, but at the moment it's not looking too bad. So we're just going to have to wait and see. And we can see that little rise over here. So is this the start of the next leg up? Or does it just roll over? We'll find out soon. All right, 1.856 trillion, so nice. We're starting you know, to edge ever so close to that $2 trillion mark. Now, I think we've been a little bit higher. I think the highest we got was $1.88 trillion, uh, maybe even sort of $1.9-ish trillion, but we're not far from it. It's just the price of the overall uh, Bitcoin that's not right up there. But look, Ethereum's getting back up there. Some of these other coins are starting to do well again. So, yep, maybe things are about to look really good. We'll just have to wait and see. BTC dominance still 58%, ETH 11%, and gas 111 uh, guay. Or guay, I don't know how they say that. I think that's guay. All right. Has anything pumped? We can see there's some green here, but has anything really rocketed in the top 100? Some things are doing all right. Hedera Hashgraph has been doing all right for quite a while, but have a look at that. That's quite a pump there. Harmony, Decentraland, Kasuma, OMG Network, Flow, Curve, The Graph, Nice, Theta Network. So there's plenty of nice gains here. Really only sort of three really good ones, at least in my eyes, what I consider really good, 15% and above. But look, we can see there's plenty of green there. So it does feel like maybe things are getting better. But we need to look at the flip side, all right? <laughs> Has there been any big losers in the top 100? That's really going to kind of, you know, help sway our decision one way or the other. All right, there has been some sort of reasonable losses, nothing kind of too major. 26% for Bitmax, but it's still up 22%. Uh, Ecomi, Anchor, again, they're still up nearly 140%, so down 11%, it's not really too much. Dent, really, there's only kind of three, you know, somewhat reasonable losses, uh, and then all very minor sort of losses right there. So I'd say the gains, well, not I would say, I know it's true because we can look over here. The gains have outweighed the losses. Again, only 3.3% though, so not by too much. But, excuse me, let's move on to the chart that I'm finding really interesting at the moment. And this is just on the daily. So far, it's happening. We have a, we have a candle that has breached this. But again, like I said, I'm wondering if this... Is this just happening sooner? So maybe this is going to happen here and it's going to be a fake out and we're going to sell for one more low and again, maybe come down and even wick down to this $48,000 mark. That's what I'm waiting to see. Maybe not. This could be it and it's just up, up and away from here or again, it's a fake out. But at the moment, it's looking really good. But it is only 10.39, so we've still got a long way to go. That needs to be a close and probably a little bit stronger because if that kind of closes where it is, it can easy kind of close back below uh, this, you know, tomorrow. So that's really what I'm looking for. But at the moment, it's definitely a breakout. We just need to see where it's going to finish. And I'm, look, the good thing is it's still very early in the morning. Like it's only 10.30 there. So really this could go a whole lot higher. Good way to start the week. The Sunday sell-off really wasn't there. It was more a kind of Thursday, Friday sell-off that we sort of had. Uh, well, actually a Wednesday, Thursday, because then that's Friday, Saturday, that's Sunday, at least here in, well, no, actually, yeah, overseas as well. <laughs> but anyway, waiting to see what happens here. Is this going to play out or is it just, again, this chucked on the end of here? I don't think it'll go straight up like that, but I do think it's going to move pretty hard if we have a confirmed breakout and more so, really, if we breach the $62,000 mark, because this can still go up to maybe about here and then roll over and come back down and look we'll just have to wait and see time will tell all right i've got some really interesting stories this one so digital uh, galaxy digital ceo mike novogratz has predicted that as much as a trillion dollars could flow into bitcoin over the next year as wealthy baby boomers get into cryptocurrencies i think that's uh quite likely what will happen but it's only going to happen one way and uh, you know, for the true crypto heads that are all about decentralization and the rest of it, they're probably going to not, not like it all that much. 
And here we go. With the example of Mornley, M Mornley, Morgan Stanley, he says that more banks will start offering Bitcoin exposure to their customers. And this is where it's really going to take off because it's just too much for people who, number one, don't really know much about crypto but are a little bit untrusting of it to try and hold seed phrases and all the rest of it. They're just not going to do it. It's too much too soon for them. If banks hold it for them and PayPal and Cash App, Ca oh, sorry, Square Cash App and things like that hold it for them, a lot more of them are going to get into it. And I actually think he's probably on the money here. I do think there's going to be a big move of people coming towards cryptocurrencies, but it'll be using uh, second uh, other services. They won't be doing it and custodying it themselves. All right. Visa completes its first cryptocurrency transaction on Ethereum. So USDC can now be used on Ethereum. What's going to be interesting here is, you know, what happens with the kind of micro transactions, though, the smaller transactions? Is Visa just going to be happy to pay the, the gas fees that are going to go with that? And, you know, will they stay with Ethereum if Ethereum can't scale and can't, you know, bring down the price of gas fees? That's really what I'm looking for. But it is interesting that it's going to finally do this. Uh, and it's using Ethereum. Look of all the chains. It could have gone other chains, but it's uh, chose Ethereum. It's just whether it will stay with Ethereum. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping Ethereum can get this stuff sorted sooner rather than later. If this is still kind of dragging on this time next year, I think Ethereum will lose so much ground. And I think someone like Cardano, Polkadot and you know, Cosmos and things like that, maybe even Tezos, who knows, but they'll just simply take over. People won't be able to keep paying these exorbitant uh, Ethereum fees forever. And not even Visa, not even the big uh, cryptocurrency sort of places, I'm sorry, not cryptocurrency, not even the big institutions will continue to pay that if they find that there's a cheaper way to do things. They might put up with it for a little while, but they won't put up with it forever. All right, Polkadot. So the Polkadot ecosystem continues to progress and finally with DeFi platform Alka Network, sorry, Akala Network becoming the first to win a parachain slot on the Rocco testnet. So they've been talking about parachains for a long time and they're coming and now the first one is here and of course, and very, very smart, it's a DeFi platform. So nicely done. Polkadot continue to grow and again, they don't have the gas fees problems at least that ethereum have they have gas fees but not the hiked up ones that ethereum is suffering from now we've just got to wait and see whether they can scale that's really the issue because they're still a fairly small chain in comparison to ethereum and it's all good that they're cheap now but ethereum was cheap when not too many people were using it if everyone suddenly piles over to polka dot can they handle it now i like polka dot i've got myself some polka dot and i really like the platform it's just now about, you know, this is Ethereum's game to lose at the moment. If they can't scale and they can't, you know, get it done in a reasonable amount of time, and again, another year's time is just too long. You know, the, we'll be in the midst of the next bear market most likely by then, and people will just simply forget Ethereum and likely move on to cheaper things. Even though in a bear market, cheap, uh, Ethereum's price will become, gas fees will naturally go down because people won't be using it. But that's only if it all plays out the same way that it's happened before, because it may not. Maybe something has changed. You know, there's lots of people saying things have changed. And look, they always change a little bit. It's just whether it's changed a lot. Are we simply going to play out the way we've played out before? Or is this that time where we're in a super cycle and, you know, we go just continue to sort of go up, not just exponentially up, but up over the next maybe 18 months, two years, three years, four years? I don't know, I'm not so sure about that, but I guess you know we're gonna find out one way or the other. But love that Polkadot's finally got its first parachain out, so well done. <sighs> Something else that goes to show that you know Ethereum really are, you know, they are gonna run out of time. So according to the data from DAP Radar and the platform itself, the total value locked for the DeFi Dex pancake swap has reached 5.5 billion in BNB equivalent. So that is a lot. That's basically getting up there and matching it with Uniswap. Now, again, it is, you know, uh, PancakeSwap saying that that's how much they've got, whether that's the truth or not. I mean, you know, I guess you can take their word from them and it can probably be uh, found on the chain somewhere. 
but I just take that with a slight grain of a salt, a grain of salt. But that is a warning sign, a warning sign for Ethereum. Like shots have been fired over your bow. Look out, pancake swaps coming, Cardano's coming for you, uh, polka dot. You know, there's BNB chain, Tezos. You name it. There's so many chains coming. Ethereum doesn't have that much time for it to dilly dally around, and it's just simply going to disappear. You know, even Uniswap, it's already allegedly been equaled. And then, you know, Sushi Swap's going to do something similar. And, you know, will Sushi Swap maybe then move away from Ethereum and jump onto another chain? It's quite possible, particularly Cardano. That's the one a lot of people are talking about. And their smart co smart coin con smart, uh, contracts are coming very, very shortly, allegedly. Again, there's always this, you know, it's coming, it's coming. And, you know, we just have to wait until it's finally there. But watch out Ethereum. And well done to Pancake Swap if this is actually true. Very well done. All right, Duke University. And I brought this information quite some time ago. So they have an endowment fund. Uh, and it's the Alma Mater of Coinbase co-founder Fred Ersham. And he was one of the fortunate few who have made an early investment in the soon-to-be-listed cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, and they're talking uh, about Coinbase. So they were early investors in Coinbase. And they're now talking about that... Uh, they could have probably 100 x their money. So two per me, two, two per people. <laughs> two people familiar with the matter said the 3.9 billion Duke endowment was included early on in the cap table of Coinbase, which is expected to command a price tag of around 100 billion when it shares, when its shares debut on the NASDAQ. The shares are now worth a small fortune on the order of nine figures, the source said. So um, 100x your money. I mean, it's taken a while. They, they didn't do this overnight, and probably not even the last year. I'm going to say it's probably taken them a few years. There you go. Since 2015 uh, is when it likely was. But look, five years to 100x your money, I don't think anyone is going to complain about that whatsoever. All right, General Motors. Are they now going to accept Bitcoin as payments? So some Bitcoin investors are watching General Motors closely in the wake of CEO Mary Barrara's response during the company's fourth quarter earnings call to a question about whether the automobile giant might accept the cryptocurrency as a form of payment. I think they absolutely will. I think basically everyone's going to jump on it because number one, not too many people are going to buy stuff with their Bitcoin anyway. A few kind of smart savvy people might buy some stuff near the top. Uh, and then get really good value for it in the sort of short term. But in the long term, again, these big companies, as long as they're not, you know, basically all of a sudden only taking Bitcoin, that's probably going to hurt them in the medium term. In long term, it'll most likely be just fine for them. But yeah, I, th I think they're probably going to do it. I couldn't imagine there's going to be too many people that won't accept Bitcoin because they will likely understand that it's only going to be a small amount of people that will do it. And if they just hold that Bitcoin for, let's say, another three to four years, they may have tripled or, you know, quadrupled their money, maybe even more. Who knows? You know, we still don't know how the cycle's playing out this cycle to give us an indication of how it plays out in the following cycle. And again, does this cycle just go on for the super cycle? Again, four years. You know, they sell a car and get Bitcoin priced at $55,000 per Bitcoin, or actually $58,000 per Bitcoin, and all of a sudden it goes to $400,000 per Bitcoin, they won't be complaining at all. All right, here's an interesting one, and, and I like some of the coins here. So a crypto whale so he's, says he's loading up on nine altcoins, and he predicts a new Bitcoin, Bitcoin all-time high is imminent. Well, we're not far off 58,000. We only have to get above basically 62,000. And we've done it. But we go down here. And so this is him, the flood. And I think he has 115,000 followers. So he has got uh, a few coins. Now, you've got to remember, he says he's loading up. He's already loaded up. <laughs> no one kind of, you know, tells people what they're about to do. They tell people what they have already done. Unless it was a friend or something like that. And their Twitter followers are, you know, like friends, but not quite. So he's already loaded up on these coins, but he's bullish on Bitcoin, the FTT or the FTX token, Solana, Synthetics Network, love it, Aave, love it, Radom, don't know a whole lot about it, and ETH. Now he's been buying these coins since back in 2015, and that was when he was 
uh, Bitcoin was two hundred and fifty dollars, and you could pick up Ethereum for a dollar. I mean, you know, think about that. Two thousand and fifteen. You know, they're talking about hundred uh, xing their money. Well, one dollar now worth basically seventeen hundred. He's more than one hundred xed his money. He's nearly, you know, two hundred xed his money. So there you go. And again, two hundred and fifty dollars through to, you know, basically sixty thousand. That is the long game that pay that can pay off in cryptocurrencies. Now again, he's probably seen, he would have not probably he's seen it go from two hundred and fifty to nearly twenty, back to three thousand five hundred, up to fourteen thousand, back to three thousand eight hundred, and now up to basically fifty seven thousand dollars. So as long as you can you know accept the volatility in the long run, the gains are absolutely phenomenal. But that's not all coins. You know, some coins are going to die and simply disappear. We just don't know what coins they are but you know at least with bitcoin and ethereum he's done quite well and that does make you think that maybe solana synthetics Aave, uh radium uh, and eth are probably a pretty good bet as well all right last but not least neptune all right so neptune neptune digital have bought a whole stack of uh, miners they're getting into the crypto mining so neptune uh, is pleased to announce that it has confirmed the delivery date for its first uh, of 300 of the previously announced 1,500 ASIC Bitcoin mining machines for April 12th. Now, they're planning to have a profit margin of approximately $4,000 per day at the current price of Bitcoin at uh, 55000 So this is only 300 of the 1,500 that they're supposed to be getting, and they're going to make four grand a day. A day that's after they pay for their electricity and they're getting it at four cents per kilowatt which I'm gonna say is probably uh, fairly cheap uh, and a 10% all-inclusive lease maintenance fee with uh, link global so there you go Bitcoin mining's growing everything seems to be happening and again we have a confirmed breakout at the moment but this is still early on a daily candle this could easily turn around and start to come back down. I don't think it's going to come down to here in a daily candle. I think that's unlikely, but completely possible. All right, that's it for me. It's a late one, so I've got to get ready to go to bed and get up and go to work. I've still got a Monday to Friday. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully, you're all on that gain train, and hopefully, things are going to be up from here, but just, you know, don't count all your eggs before they hatch, as they say. And I'll see you next time.